When it comes to formatting your object, shapes, pictures, and text boxes, I want to keep it really simple. Just go ahead and select like your text box, click on the text, and you can see the box around it that contains the text therein. And then up here you get the related contextual format tab that, well, if you click off the box it disappears. Go ahead and click on it, and you can see all the different formatting options for your shape and the text therein. Also works for, well, when you select that, it's the picture, or sees it as a picture. And you've got, again, your related contextual format tab, the options that you have for that. And it's different because, you know, you've got picture styles because you're selecting a picture. So it's formatting proprietary to the picture as opposed to the text box, which, well, you get your shape styles instead of the picture styles. So let's go ahead and click on our ghosty here and work on him. Click on the format tab. Because what I want to go over in this training video is, first of all, the brightness and contrast. And we can come over here, go to the adjust group. Because if you want special effects, like I do for my ghost, you can do some cool effects by clicking on corrections, click on it, and you get your brightness and contrast. Now, what's the difference between the two? Well, brightness is the lightness of the picture, and contrast is the difference between darkest and lightest areas of the picture. So you can see here it's highlighted. And the brightness is zero and contrast is zero, so we're normal. It's a normal ghost. But if I go to the left, I decrease in brightness. And you can see as I hover over it, in the pop-up it says negative 40% brightness. The contrast is still at 0%. But if I go up to less contrast, differences between the darkest and lightest areas of the picture, you can see that there's just nothing that really pops. As opposed to going down the other way, the brightness is still the same, you can see. As I go down, it's still at negative 40%, but the contrast flips around and goes to a positive 40%. So the darkest and lightest areas have even greater differences than before. So you can go ahead and click on that to select it, or if you want more options, well, there's options there. Click on that, and it opens up our task pane. And instead of going with the presets that we saw, you can also bring it up here as well, in case if you change your mind, you don't have to bust a lot of calories to come up here to click on corrections here to select it when you have this open. But, with brightness and contrast, you can use the spin dials 1 or 2%, or come in here and type in 13%, that's a spooky number, hit enter, or you can click and drag these little sliders here, and the contrast, the brightness, or darkness, and you can always reset it when you're like, hey, I don't like any of that. But I do like, let me click on the drop down arrow, this option here, brightness negative 40%, contrast plus 40. Click on it, and he looks spooky. Next, let's close out of the task pane here. Let's go down to slide 7 and cover transparent color. So what I'm looking at is the white background here. I mean, it just looks too blocky. How about if I could get rid of that color, make it transparent? Wouldn't you say that's nifty? Of course you would. Let's go ahead and select it and come up here and click on the Format tab and go to the Adjust group, and we're looking at color. Click on it, and ooh, you've got a lot of options. you got color saturation. Look, I'm going to give them a tan. And that's saturation 400%. And you can see the, well, you got to look down below here as I hover. It gives us a preview. Okay. And then you got your color tone. So you can click one, select another, recolor. Kind of a weird looking party there. Gold accent color, three dark. But what I want to do is I want to set transparent color, make a color in the current picture transparent. And that's singular. It's not colors. So when I click on that, and I'm like, ooh, I'd like to make your shirt transparent, do some cool effects. The problem is, is that, even though it's a single color, you've got ripples, different shades, and so it can't handle the shades. So when I click on it, you see how part of it becomes transparent, goes right through to the back. Let's see if I go down. Well, you're not going to see it here. Oh, now you can see the text right there. Okay. Let me go ahead and hit undo. And, well, hit undo again. Or I can reset the picture. You know, click on reset picture, and it's back to the way it was. And if you watched my earlier training video, we covered this, so it shouldn't be a shocker here. Reset picture, unless you didn't watch it. Let's go ahead and click on color again, and click on set transparent color, and click on white. Okay, for the most part it does a fabulous job. You can see it got even that space underneath the arm and her hair there. You got the streamers that are coming down, so it got rid of some of it, because it blended in with the white very well. She's missing a glass, so she can't party. In any case, let's go ahead and click off, and yeah, that's not bad. So if you do have something that's more definitive as a background, as being a single color, not having things kind of getting in the way, then you could really have something that you could do and work well with your presentation, like you're a, a picture editing pro. 
And then finally, let's go over the 3D rotation. We went over it briefly, but let's go ahead and with it selected, you can either come up here on the Format tab, go to the Picture Styles group, and click on Picture Effects, and you get your 3D rotation option. Or, you know, you can right-click on the picture and go to Format Picture. And you can see over here, well, with this option selected, the effects, because, you know, that's where it was under Effects. You get also the expanded 3D format. So you can come up here and click on it, of course, and go down to 3D rotation, and you get all these presets. Well, you get none. But then as you hover over it, this one's isometric left down. And you've got to look at my... See, if I move off of it, you won't be able to see the preview. But in any case, watch it. In any case, you get the idea. Just hover over it, find the one that you like. Perspective, a little bit. Eh, that's kind of cool, but boy, it really plays up on the brightness there, doesn't it? Relaxed, moderately. Well, these guys are relaxed partiers. In any case, you can do that or click on Options, which, well, brings up the same task pane here. And you got, well, where it used to be collapsed, and all of this was collapsed here. 3D format, 3D rotation. So you got the format, and you can select one of the presets here if you want a bevel. Maybe make it round. Oh, let's see, it's just not working for me, so let me hit undo. But once you select one of the presets, you can adjust the width and the height of it, and bottom bevel, and things like that, and contour in the material, the lighting. Um, do you want it to be cool, like freezing? Oh, that's a very cool party. Something I don't want to party with. So let's go ahead and collapse that and go to 3D rotation. There we go. So we've got the presets. Again, you've got them here, so you don't have to come up here and click on the picture effects to go down there. It's right there in case if you want to get to the presets really quick. And then you've got your options where you can actually type in your X rotation as your horizontal axis, you know, from your days of algebra. Don't make me go over my math again. And then you've got the Y rotation, which is the vertical axis. And then, of course, your Z, the depth here. And so let's go ahead and type in 13. And it rotates a little bit. You can type it in, hit enter, use the spin dials. And you can also use the rotation arrows, as it were. In any case, there we go. And then the Y rotation. Why? Because it's there and it's doing along the vertical axis. And then the Z rotation, so that you can tilt it along more depth-wise. It's getting pretty funky. But you may have a purpose for it. That would look a lot better than what I've got here. Click off, and that's not doing it for me. So if I'm like, ah, undo, and I don't have the undo button, again, you can reset the picture one of many ways. You can select it, come over here in the task pane, and click on reset, or up here on the format tab, go to the adjust group again. You got your reset, and we're back to where we started. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.